G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I'm going to be announcing a new product for my store at BIM Guru. So I'm going to show you a brief demo and just briefly describe what it is. Um, so I'd like to announce that I've announced, uh, I've released the Revit 2020 door content package to support my template. So this is for my work. Um, so Aussie BIM Guru is my play, BIM Guru is my work. So it is a bit of a marketing promo, um, but I'm announcing that the package is now available. So it's going to support my BIM Guru uh, 2020 template, which actually sold really well. It's had more than 100 sales so far. So all these people that have access to this template will now be able to use doors for it as well. And you don't necessarily need the template to use the doors, but they do work best with the template itself. So the purpose of the video is to show you how to purchase the content and just quickly demonstrate to you what's contained in it and just touch on some future product releases. So don't feel pressured to buy this content just because you want to support my channel. Um, you don't have to buy anything from me to support me. I do what I do out of passion and enjoyment, uh, but I'm trying to improve the industry by releasing this resource. So it's a really good quality content resource, I think, and will help people maybe follow some of my future training videos here and there with more context. Um, the pricing is typically going to be $75, which is a little bit more than my template because this is quite advanced content. I did put quite a lot of time into it, so I do need to charge accordingly. Um, but I've tried to make it at least relatively affordable for its first week um, on the market uh, to put it at 33% off, so $50. I'm not planning to discount it further like I have with my template because the template is ultimately a learning resource. This is more so something that you can use to produce projects using my template and the doors itself. Um, so in this case, discounts are less likely to occur. So why would I want to share it? Well, I want to improve my industry. Um, so I do want to release content into the industry as well, um, not just keep it cooped up on my library. So this is my actual content that I use um, in my personal projects. So I'm actually releasing like the best quality content I've built for doors. So you can purchase it at my store. So if you go to the store icon on my homepage, and then you just um, click on the actual icon, you can see here the, the one with $25 off for one week. Um, and you'll find it uh, just has a lot of descriptions already on the page. So you'll be able to read a bit of information about it and what's contained in it before you add it to your cart. Note that you will need to create an account um, in order to purchase this content. So what will you get? Well, you'll get a sample file which contains all the doors laid out with some information about them. You'll also get the door families themselves. So you'll get 17 door families uh, for standard doors and then seven curtain wall panel doors in this case. And they contain over 50 types across them and they do cover most common types of doors. As well as that, you'll get the image maps to support the materials that the doors contain and also just a copy of the terms of use, which includes the fact that these can't be sold on for third party distribution. They can be used by companies, but they can't be sold specifically as content. So they do need to be held by the person that purchases, purchases the product originally. And you can buy a lot of other things on my store separately, such as shared parameter files and material library and keynotes. Um, they'll be found there as well. Um, and coming soon, there will be a casework collection, which has been quite um, hotly demanded. I know that everyone needs cabinetry for kitchens and all sorts of things like that. And also just a lot of miscellaneous objects that I'll package into smaller packages that can be purchased um, for less than $75. They'll be cheaper. They might be somewhere between $25 to $50, depending. Um, but expect to see these released on roughly a weekly cycle for quite a while now. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate um, the actual file itself and the content. So in terms of the structure of the file, when you when you purchase it, you'll end up with essentially, uh, in this case, you'll end up with a set of families, some image maps, uh, two lookup tables, which I'll talk about shortly, a copy of my terms of use and a project. So I'm gonna be looking at this project specifically, but the families themselves, the doors are really located in two folders. And then there's some objects that just support them at a nested level. And there's also a door tag, for example, in the sanitation symbols folder. If we look at the doors folder itself, you'll get a bunch of sub folders that basically set them into their own areas. Now you will get the basic doors that come with my basic template, um, but this isn't really the focus of the package, but they're there anyway. So what you'll get is you'll get three swing doors. So you'll get this double, single and unequal. And there's actually a lot of features you can't see in these thumbnails. So I will show you some of the features the doors have. You also have stacking doors. So you have four operable wall types with different stacking configurations. And then just a sliding, uh, a, sl a fold, uh, it's like a one-way stacking door, I guess you'd call it, um, with a op uh, set number of leaves that you can change and size as well. 
You also get some sliding doors, so you'll get a robe door, just a double robe, which is quite common in residential projects, and also a double and a single cavity slider. You also get a lift door and a roller shutter door, so this is a drum roller in this case, not a sectional overhead. Um, and you'll get some folding doors too, so you'll get a one-way folding door and a two-way folding door. Um, so you also get curtain wall doors as well. So you'll get a couple, you'll get two fully glazed pivot doors, uh, you'll get two fully glazed sliding with pelmet, and you'll also get um, two partially glazed, uh, in this case just with a, a sidebar trim around the edge, and you'll get a, a folding gate as well that you can use in curtain walls specifically. So I'm just going to jump into the project itself. Um, so when you open the project, you'll get a little home screen. Um, you'll get a lot of features that my template has as well. So you'll get the standard shared parameters just to support the doors in this case. Um, you also get a schedule for the doors too. So all the doors placed actually already schedule automatically. So you'll get an idea of what information can be scheduled about each type of door. Some doors don't schedule specific information when it's not relevant. For example, door protection on roller shutter doors and operable walls isn't usually relevant. So you will find some things will schedule, some things won't. For example, double double doors will schedule both their leaves and single will only schedule one leaf. Um, so you'll get an idea of how to schedule these doors specifically. But let's just jump a look at and have a look at what we have. So if, if you go to general, there's just gonna be a few sections about the, the file, about the system. So there'll be a page about the lookup tables and how they can achieve various things like vision panel types um, and also latch side clearance conditions. And um, you'll also get a section that just talks about the door types in this case. So you'll get a convention about how things have been named and numbered. Um, you'll also get a, a section talking about future content, um, uh, such as my detail library and my casework. But probably this area is quite useful because you get to see my conventions of how I name things. And that'll give you a better idea of how things are set up. Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. So let's just start in 3D. I'm just gonna go to my 3D preview. So you can see we have quite a lot of doors and they've been laid out in rows. So I'll go to a specific plan view where I'll show you how they've been laid out. But you've essentially got, in this case, uh, six rows of doors. So if I just go into the information section and I go to my content view, um, you'll see that we've got a lot of information here available and a lot of text to sort of describe how each specific door behaves and the features that it has. Usually it's got a category, a short explanation, and then just a summary of all the features. And typically I've dimensioned them just to show that the doors are fully dimensionable and set outable in plan. So you'll see here, for example, the frames are 40 and the leaf itself is 820. And you'll see you do get frame profiles. These are nested into the door. And you can also tag the doors as well and also get their information with a, a detail tag. So you can see here that they've got quite a lot of information already. I mean, if I go and check the doors themselves, they're loaded with information. Lots of things that can control various aspects of the door and also a lot of type information as well um, to control the dimensions and the sizes and the codes, all sorts of things. Um, I won't cover them all here because there's a lot to cover. Um, if you do purchase the file, you'll get a better summary of what's available. There are some pretty cool features these doors have, such as being able to adjust their 2D swing um, in floor plan on a type basis, because sometimes people graphically like to do this for say like a services cupboard. Um, but also in 3D, you'll notice that you can also open these doors in 3D as well on a separate basis. So I have controls for 3D swings. So I can actually adjust my 3D swing angle between a range of I think about 170 and zero. So I can open my doors in 3D, which is great for visualization purposes. If you're walking a client through your building, there's nothing worse than having to go head first through a door. <laughs> so this will hopefully help your client feel a little bit more immersed in your designs. As well as that, you've also got vision panels available in the doors too. So a lot of the door types will have a catalog of vision panels built into them. Typically these are controlled by these panel parameters. So you can see here, I've currently got a type 11 on either side. You can also see here I've got a type 1 and a type 41. So various types achieve various things. Now let's say I want to just add a grill. I can see that now I can just add a 41 and I've got an 11 and a 41. So they're really easy to mix and match and they're all just based on a catalog of types. Um, so there is a view where I sort of lay out all the specific types and you can see you get quite a lot of vision panel types available. So it's a really interesting system that I've been experimenting with for quite a while now. And I found it's very easy to work with. Now you could adjust it to a type basis system if you wanna make the panels part of the door type, um, but you can schedule these as well. So you could just schedule your panel types in your door um, rather than having to create lots of types for lots of different vision panel configurations. As well as that, some of the panels do respond to the size of the leaf. So you can see here, for example, I've got a type 31 and a type 41, and this is in a 1020 leaf. And I can go in this case to a in this case, an 820 leaf, and I can do again those types. I can do a 31 and a 41. 
and they will be based on the leaf size. So you can see here that I have the same inset even though the leaf size is different. So sometimes you get fixed size panels and sometimes you get panels that size themselves to suit the leaf with an offset. So it's quite dynamic in how they work. As well as that, there's also latch side clearance zones. So if anyone's worked in Australia, you'll, you'll probably be familiar with AS1428, which dictates a lot of approach conditions for disabled people. So for example, code one, in this case, the approach condition for the first approach to a door is from the hinge side, whereas code two is from the latch side. And there are various dimensions that are dictated by this approach condition. If I go into my floor plan, into my content view, and I just go and check out one of these doors, if my leaf is big enough to support accessible clearance, then I'll have the ability to actually modify the approach conditions. And these are actually 3D objects. You can clash detect them in Navisworks, for example, and they're also shared. So you can isolate them, filter them, change their graphics. You can just turn them off. Like I have a filter on this view, for example, where I can just turn off all my clearances. And you can see now all the clearances are hidden from view, but if you need to see them from an auditing perspective, they're easily, easily turned on. So there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with these elements. Um, and they pretty much size themselves based on the leaf size as well. So there's a various range of conditions depending on the clearance that you achieve. Now, if you choose a leaf size that doesn't support latch side clearance, these will automatically hide. So they won't be shown if the, ling, if the swing is too small. Instead, there'll be a tick box that tells you the door is not accessible. So it's really easy to audit when your accessible conditions aren't occurring as well. So you could, you could use a filter to just pick up that parameter, for example, just to make sure that all your doors that are accessible are accessible, because that's really important. And most doors don't do that that people make. I've got a range of folding doors where you can change the number of leafs in each case. So you can do different size number of leafs on either side or equal, up to you. Um, I've also got stacking doors as well. So you can you can basically change the number of stacking leaves you want. You can see here, I've got a family that's achieving two, three, and four. And you can keep adding leaves to that, as many as you want, essentially. Uh, there will be a count in the family that controls that. So for at the mo at the example, at the moment, I've got four 920 leaf doors. What if I want to make that five? I'll just change this count to five. And you can see now my leaf, it gets bigger to handle an extra leaf. So I can change my leaf size to change the total width. And you can see now I've got five leaves instead. So pretty powerful. And you can see as well, the frame had to get deeper to accommodate that fifth leaf as well. Let's have a look um, at some other things. So we've got some sliding cavity doors, which are great. Um, they're really handy. I've got a single and a double and they show their cavity over the wall, which is really useful. Um, and they also support latch side clearance conditions as well. And if anyone's used AS 1428, you'll know that the sliding condition is a little bit different for a sliding door. So these do actually factor in at different approach conditions. So ranges uh, of nine through to 12 accommodate for the sliding types. And they, they also factor in things like the depth of the wall that you have to reach into, which is part of how the clearance is achieved. So these will achieve AS1428 in a sliding scenario as well. I have some miscellaneous doors, so I have some operable walls and they have a lot of different controls available to you, which lets you position such things as the cupboard and the track. And as your operable wall changes size on an instance basis, you'll notice that the leaves get smaller as well. You can also change the number of leaves your door comp is comprised of. Let's say we, now we've got three. And you'll see that everything adjusts to factor in that change in the door. So they're very flexible because um, most operable walls need to be quite flexible in their sizes and panels and everything like that. So you will find them very useful. As well as that, we have a roller shutter door and I'll, I'll touch on that one shortly because you can open the roller shutter door just like you can the door. And we have a lift door. Now it's important to note, I have a shaft clearance family which contains the car graphic. I always work this way because you want this to be the same between floors. There's nothing worse than having a lift door that contains the car family on every single floor because chances are one of those ones is gonna get misaligned and suddenly your lift doors won't line up and hence your shaft won't work. So I find if you make the shaft and the car a single family, spanning between floors, so this is a two level based family, and then you make your lift doors separate, it's really easy to keep your lift doors and your car aligned because you, you always have to be lined up to the same shaft. Simple, right? As well as that, I've got a range of curtain doors as well. So I've got them compliant to latch side clearance in these cases. I've also got some pivot swings as well with an adjustable pivot setting. And I also have pelmet sliders as well with adjustable pelmets. So these are really handy and you can also just offset them off the wall as well. So there should be a parameter where you can offset them by a set distance. So you have a lot of control over the positioning relative to the curtain wall that you place it in. I then also have some chain gate doors as well. So let's just have a quick look at these in section because it's important to make sure these things look good in elevation or section as well. So you can see the operable walls and the roller door. Now the roller door can be opened. 
for the moment I've opened it up a meter or I can just close it. So again, really handy for visualization purposes. And I've got my lift door, which again, I can open again because it's quite common that you, you need to go inside a lift when you're showing a client. So I can open my 3D width of the door. And if I put in a really crazy number, it does limit how far you can actually open the door. So you can only open it as far as it can be open. So if you do put in a pretty illogical number, it's okay, the family protects it from going too crazy. If I go to my swing doors, I can see all my graphics are looking really nice. My vision panels are looking great. So everything's really clean. See, I've got stacking door graphics. In this case, the handles are on the other side. Um, but you can see I've got my sliding, my sliding doors always have a sliding arrow to tell you which way the slides are occurring and the fixed panels obviously don't have a slide in this case. And you can see my sliding doors there. You can see when you open them in 3D, you also see the open in elevation. So you may not want to always leave them open. You might want to shut them once you're done with your visualization study. Now you could obviously connect these up to like a global parameter or something like that, where you could just open up all the doors in your model that you want to open at the same time using a global offset. So that could be really handy. Um, you can see I've got, uh, in this case, my, I think, I think that's nearly all of them. I've got the curtain wall doors as well. So you can see my pelmet sliders with the pelmet, which is fully adjustable. So you can actually type in an offset for the pelmet if you want to offset a specific distance. Um, and also my chain gate doors. And I'll just jump back in 3D just to give you one last look at them. Um, but you can see that they're, they're pretty decently detailed. Um, they have certain aspects to them, uh, such as protection, which you can adjust. I might just go to my standard door to show you that. So I have door protection on the side and I can set it to zero so that it just turns off. So if I don't have protection, it's just turned off and I can also set it to say like 900 maybe. Whoops. And you can see I can add protection to a, a particular height. Um, and I can also do things like change the materials of the door. So most elements have instance based materials so I can change the paint finish on the outside or the inside. I can change my frame, I can change my vision panels. And I can also change my protection material. So really handy. Um, but I think that's probably roughly all I was gonna show for this demonstration. Uh, but hopefully that gives you some confidence in the, in the door types. It's important to note you can turn vision panels on for the folding and the stacking and the sliding doors as well. So you can achieve partially glazed doors, for example. You can see here I'm almost achieving like a, almost like a bifold door style just by adjusting the panel type, really easy. Even for the stacking door as well. So this could be like really useful for a hospital, for example. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you some confidence in the product and interests you in maybe purchasing. So the file for this presentation will be on GitHub. The files themselves won't be on GitHub, they'll be on my website. Um, but thank you for watching today. And if you have any questions or queries just about what you've seen today or any of my other products or services, um, feel free to get in touch. I also offer BIM consulting. So if you're looking for a BIM consultant, um, feel free to let me know as well. And not just in Australia, I consult overseas as well. So um, thanks for watching today. If you're not already following and subscribing to my Aussie BIM Guru channel, uh, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in future videos. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.